All right, I think we'll go ahead and get started. My name is Michael Bagg, and I'm a systems engineer for NetApp. And what we're going to talk about today is the importance of data management for NFB. Although, I think that uh, when we start talking about NFB, we're also going to maybe merge some ideas around what is the next generation data center. Because as we, as I got a slide that I'll explain a little bit later, there is a little bit of a uh, merging of the private cloud that exists in telcos and the NFE space. You'll see more and more that both of those environments are beginning to be uh, managed by those, uh, the same teams. So the agenda today, we'll do some little introduction around NetApp. I'll talk some bit around what NetApp uh, means for NFE architectures and next generation data center architectures. And I'll look around at uh, NetApp's portfolio as it applies to NFB. So what is NetApp? Is everybody here familiar with NetApp? Uh, shared storage, yes. We have uh, NetApp friends and family in here. But uh, for, for some uh, uh, network, architectures, uh, network architect teams and team members, the NFE teams, uh, the concept and idea of shared storage is a little bit foreign. You know, they uh, typically, when NF NFV teams begin to look at NFV, you know, they have their own environments, they have their own, uh, they get carved out of the organization as a whole and they get to sort of self-manage. You know, typically they'll build their own kind of OpenStack environment, they'll run their uh, proof of concept, they'll do a bunch of synthetic work workload testing, and they really don't have any sense or need yet of what a uh, shared storage uh, vision means. So for those who are here who are not uh, used to running or managing or working with storage, NetApp is a uh, enterprise uh, shared storage uh, vendor. And uh, I got a few marketing tidbits up here. Number one vendor satisfaction for converged infrastructure. You know, if you've uh, worked with uh, UCS uh, FlexPod, of course you've worked with NetApp. Uh, we're number two in the flash market. Uh, we're ahead of Pure, HPE, and IBM. And of course, we are the creator of ONTAP, the world's uh, number one branded data management software. Now, uh, one tidbit that's not on here that I, I probably ought to have added is that uh, NetApp is the number one commercial storage platform deployed against OpenStack in the market. You know, so that is an important thing to think about. And how does shared storage even enter into OpenStack? When do, uh, when do you get to that point in your looking at storage and managing storage when you're that NFB IT director and you're finally ready to start pushing your environment away from that sort of lab environment to production is you'll come across this uh, sort of one line uh, where you'll see that it says, some, says something like this. Right, so you'll see uh, you know, this idea that, you know, and I'll just read it, in many environments, the ephemeral disks are stored on the compute host local disk, but for production environments, we recommend that the compute host be configured to use a shared storage system instead. And for a lot of NFV teams who have been marching along, they've been uh, maturing their uh, NFV tenant that they've chosen or a collection of NFV tenants, they've got their uh, synthetic workloads running and they've proved out the requirements and now they're ready to move towards production. And generally what that means is just this. They begin to start using a shared storage. And when they do that, they encounter some problems they had yet not encountered. Things like scale, things like having a deterministic kind of predictable performance, uh, the ability to put quality of service, all of the kind of programmatic controls that they had absolute um, you know, understanding and control of when it was on a host-based uh, storage, now, when they're in a shared system, they've, they may even be encountering workload, or, or not workload, but workflow problems, where now there's a workflow where to get storage, they have to run through a ticketing system, or that storage system has to be managed with a GUI. And when we're talking about NFE, we're talking about scale, we're talking about automation. If you have a storage system that doesn't provide for programmatic kinds of controls, that's gonna be a problem. You can't have of uh, the rapidity of scale for NFV if you have to go touch a GUI, if you have to go and cut a ticket for some human being to get involved to do something. So that's where commercial shared storage is going to enter the picture for a lot of these NFV environments. NetApp has a long history with OpenStack. Um, of course, we've had 
uh, founding members for Middle on our team, uh, the project team lead uh, that helped break Cinder away from Nova. There's actually an engineer that's on the uh, Solid Fire team. Uh, so there's been a, a long history and uh, dedicated support and continued support for the OpenStack uh, storage environment. We're the, uh, not just the major contributor for Cinder Vanilla, I think we still are the largest contributor for those code sets and code bases. We've also a gold charter member of the uh, Cloud Native Cloud Foundation. You know, that same engineer who worked on Cinder, broke Cinder out from Nova, also wrote the Docker volume plugin. Of course, we have many architectures with FlexPod that support OpenStack, uh, including uh, FlexPod with Docker Data Center. What we're talking about with this slide here is this idea that the telco network, the kind of ubiquity of the global telco space where um, what sort of happens in the telco world begins to filter and trickle its way down from just the telco and the hyperscale and that service provider space down to the enterprise and from the enterprise down to the small and medium business. You know, I know of a, and, and, and what that means is that when we see these NFE teams begin to collapse with the private cloud teams in the telco space, we're gonna start seeing that more and more in the enterprise space. And that's what we'll, call, we'll sort of call it the next generation data center, like this differentiation between NFE and IT telco cloud and data centers as a whole is beginning to converge. We're beginning to see the demand and see drivers for NFE begin to move into the data center as a whole. Um, and it begins to cut across uh, all verticals and all, all company sizes. You know, I know a small city in um, Alberta, Canada, uh, where they're running their uh, parking system on OpenStack. And when you begin to scratch the surface of how they're running that and what that data center that they're running that platform on, it begins to look a little bit like the Etsy architecture. You know, so then I'm talking about a uh, city with not much resources, uh, without the kind of enterprise ability and scale of teams to run this, are absolutely running on uh, OpenStack environments. And it looks a lot like NFE. And in fact, it maps to the kind of IoT uh, workloads that we're going to start talking about, you know, where uh, you think of the handheld device that scans the, or the driven device that scans the license plates of cars down to the ability for the person who receives the ticket to pay the ticket with their phone or to pay the ticket online. You know, those kinds of platforms, those kinds of services are no longer just at the hyperscale or at the telco level. So these same drivers that we're talking about here, this ability to scale, you know, either, either at small scale or scaling up to large, um, it cuts across all of those market sizes. Um, and even though I just mentioned a, a sort of a point solution uh, environment, uh, the, the reality is, is that uh, NFE is going to have to support multi-tenancy. We think about uh, supporting those critical kinds of workloads that touch healthcare. You know, I know that uh, in California, there's a large uh, healthcare service provider that's beginning to consolidate their software environments off of uh, hospitals into the cloud. And that's gonna be kind of a nervous making thing as we begin to have uh, software that runs uh, incubators for premature infants is gonna be running into cloud. So how do you deliver the kind of high, avail high availability and critical nature of a software environment like that uh, in an NFE environment and deliver the same kind of resiliency when it was on-prem. So multi-tenancy is gonna be very important. Data is entering uh, the, the needs of NFE environments at a tremendous rate. You know, I often, uh, you know, I recall meeting many uh, NFE IT directors who say, well, you know, I don't really have a storage problem. Well. Not yet, uh, because what we're beginning to see is that the desire need for your NFE tenants in the uh, environments and the applications that those NFE tenants are supporting are going to have to reach and touch uh, fast and large data storage pools. I look at the oil and gas sector that is beginning to use drones, for instance. Uh, they use these drones to do monitoring of uh, drilling platforms or of pipelines, and these drones are doing everything from uh, infrared analysis, uh, spectral gas spectrometer analysis of the pipes to make sure there's no leakage or corrosion. Um, but they also do things like monitor safety here. You know, from an imaging standpoint, they can see that everybody's wearing the right, uh, you know, uh, hard hat or gloves or boots. You know, they can do this kind of imaging. And this is this uh, NFV IoT mix where, 
know, this drone is emitting terabytes of data every time it does a flyover. And how do you do the analysis of that data? How do you ingest that data in an environment? Uh, typically, NFE has not been a capacity demand or capacity required environment, but more and more it is. And that environment requires you know, fast, large storage pools. And then of course, you may have NFE environments that are specifically performance related, where capacity is less so of a factor and performance is a, is a desired attribute. Um, and the kinds of scale that you're going to see for uh, particularly large telcos that are covering large geographic regions or metropolitan areas are going to have to scale and your storage is going to support that thousands of uh, elements and instantiated VMs. Let's see what else? I gotta drink some water. So you see the, the five principles of storage that fit all of those use cases that I kind of mentioned are, are quite simply listed here. You know, these principles of storage, this idea that you need to be able to scale. And the scale goes from, you know, a telco that may have a number of small points of presence within a metropolitan urban area. You're gonna see these sort of, you know, 10U NEBS compliant boxes uh, scattered throughout a metropolitan area to support that sort of cloud edge environment. And what kind of storage are you gonna put in that? You know, how are you going to be able to uh, you know, manage that storage when there's failures? You know, what kind of architectures are going to live in these sort of pop-based environments where if the piece of storage fails, how do you resolve it? So if you're supporting you know, dozens of uh, you know, NFE pods throughout a metropolitan area, you know, how do you provide the kind of life cycle maintenance? How do you provide the kind of failover support in those environments? You need to be able to, if a part of that storage system fails, send a smart hands guy out there to resolve it. You know, uh, you're not gonna be able to send a storage architect or a storage designer to repair that system. It's just not gonna scale right. You need to be able to send a smart hands guy out there who could just pull out the, you know, the, the node three with uh, two ports to connect the system back up and it self heals. And if the environment's gonna require the kind of deterministic guaranteed performance you need to be able to put swim lanes around the volumes of supporting the various of your NFE workloads. You need to be able to adjust those on the fly. The degree of automation man of management, of being able to uh, provide not just uh, scripted or templated kinds of deployments and, and management and maintenance, you need to be able to allow for kind of the, the modern machine to machine. Like you are looking down towards, um, you know, sort of AI controlled kinds of deployments and configuration. And you're not gonna be able to do that if you have a storage system that requires manual kinds of configuration and um, you know, interfaces that a human being has to touch. NetApp is a portfolio company. We have a number of portfolio products that will map into any number of requirements that fit the range of NFE workloads that float out there. Um, NFE will fit across uh, the customer premise equipment, that's the CPE at the far end, uh, through edge and uh, mobile edge cloud, like I was just talking about, where you have those sort of urban NFE pods scattered throughout, a, throughout an environment, uh, to you know, those larger regional data centers, or to even the central data centers. You know, there's gonna be a, a span and a range of types of requirements, a span and range of uh, the size and scale, you know, all the way down from the 10U NEBS compliant pod up to, you know, those massive data centers that we all know and love. So when we talk about the portfolio that maps across that range, um, th there's three primary products that'll fit in there. We could talk about the E-Series, talk about FAS or all-flash FAS, talk about SolidFire, and generally what you'll see is environments where they'll have more or less of one of these environments. And let's say if you have sort of the uh, capacity growth use case, and what you'll see is the FAS or the all flash FAS, put against that and you'll augment it with uh, SolidFire, or you'll augment it with an E-Series, depending on what kind of requirements that you have. And conversely, you may have a larger SolidFire deployment, and, you'll, and it's, uh, you, you have that need for rich API and the automation, but you may also have some performance that you require, and you could augment it with the uh, E-Series. You'll find uh, NetApp throughout the Etsy NFE model. You'll find it in 
uh, all of the elements. You'll, you know, of course, I'll probably talk more about where NetApp fits into NFEI, but of course, it also connect is a uh, VNF tenant itself. Many teams are breaking the uh, OSS and BSS away from the Etsy model and they have its own self-supported architecture. Uh, you'll find NetApp in there. NetApp has a number of tools and integrations with things like Ansible, Chef, Puppet, Fuel, uh, Ubuntu, um, where you have to have that degree of integration and the rich data management capabilities that may exist beyond what's available through the typical Etsy deployment. And I think I'll talk a little bit more around where NetApp fits into NFEI, which is where uh, I see most of the deployments taking place. And from uh, my sort of jaundiced view, because I am a SE for the Solifier team, uh, Solifier is where you'll see um, a lot of NFE deployments uh, because Solifier maps exactly to those five kind of next generation data center or NFE principles that we talk about. This idea of being to scale, this idea of having guaranteed performance, management, data assurance, efficiencies. You know, uh, I don't think that uh, global efficiencies are the kinds of efficiencies that fit into storage or paid too very much attention to uh, in NFE environments. But these are real world kinds of savings and considerations that you have to take into, uh, take, take into account. Um, things like power and uh, space are gonna be quite critical when you start talking about landing um, those small NFE pods throughout. You absolutely need to have uh, table stakes kinds of modern uh, data efficiencies and deduplication and compression. If you're using a storage environment that doesn't have those kinds of capabilities, it's gonna be problematic when you begin to scale or we begin to have multitudes. Data assurance for solid fire, uh, absolutely critical in these environments. Um, as you begin to scale an environment, as you begin to have a geographic dispersion of your environments, you will not have the ability to provide you know, the traditional kinds of maintenance that you have had with your storage. Uh, for solid fire, if you're going to lose a disk or a node, um, it returns back to an HA state within minutes or an hour if you lose a node. And when that happens, you're back up to HA, and then you can replace that node at your leisure. FedEx it the next day, pull the node out, put the node in. You can just get the smart hands with the hard hats and a yellow vest to go out and replace that node. The full API that's available in solid fire is unmatched by any other storage platform. Um, you know, when we begin to talk about that migration away from manual configuration, manual kinds of uh, dashboard interface uh, to a templated and scripted to machine to machine, Solfire is an absolute fit for that. That's expressly where the NFE world house requires. Performance is another thing, and, uh, and you know, Solfire is not the fastest storage platform, but the idea of being able to put swim lanes, being able to have sort of that deterministic quality of service that you could apply on a per volume basis is absolutely critical to NFE workloads, especially when you begin to start sharing those workloads with other systems um, that perhaps do not have that level of sophistication. You need to have a way to provide that minimum quality of service to those workloads that are supporting crit critical workloads and critical NFE tenants. And you can only do that with an ability of having uh, that rich sort of minimum and maximum and burst kinds of quality of service that Solifier provides. And scale, of course, is important. Uh, when you're talking about supporting uh, the sort of micro scale NFE pods that are throughout a metropolitan region uh, to massive data centers where you're going to have to land 40 to 100 uh, nodes, Solifier is absolutely a fit for that. And of course, this is where we're talking about some of the you know, more uh, time and space uh, features of solid fire. It's like it's simply less cables, it's less rack space, less administration. I mean, this is where uh, solid fire makes it so easy and smart for if you're trying to have that repeatable deployment experience. You can absolutely create kind of an automated ingestion and deployment that you can absolutely mechanize for those subsequent repeated scale out kinds of deployments that you're going to have throughout an environment. You know, the day zero for solid fire is very straightforward, very easy. And if you need to be able to replicate that uh, ac across scale, across uh, larger deployments, this is absolutely critical. On tap select. Now, <laughs> it's kind of interesting. I know that uh, NetApp is simply short for network appliance. 
you know, the very idea that the software defined storage is of itself a VNF. It is a tenant that lives with that environment and can provide with that environment exactly those kinds of rich data, data features and data management that isn't available through the Etsy architecture. When you begin to start landing a range of uh, NFE tenants that have very low levels of maturity, you know, they're not quite yet cloud aware. They are still in a kind of maybe not pet, but maybe not cattle kind of uh, state where they require that sort of pseudo legacy environment. You absolutely need to be able to provide something like uh, ONTAP Select at that NFE level, at that layer, to provide the services to those applications that still require it. And this is what was described here, is where you can place on tap uh, as a VNF. You can run it as a VNF and uh, abstract away from even non-NetApp non uh, hardware environments. Uh, you can sit it on top of a VMware vSphere or vSAN or uh, KVM, which of course is still in uh, beta. It also lives down in the NFE. You can have on tap in the NFE layer and provide that wide uh, sort of uh, Swiss tool knife capability set for the uh, NFE environment. And again, it can abstract away from even non-NetApp uh, hardware. So I don't have a storage problem, many NFE IT directors say. And I'm here to say you don't know about the problems that you're going to have. Um, you know, and you don't want to wait as a uh, manager of an NFE environment until you have storage problems. These are very difficult problems to retrofit. If you've marched yourself down the path of using a certain kind of uh, storage platform and storage software that you haven't yet in encountered the difficulties around scale, around the difficulties of, of automation, it's very difficult to turn the tide back and redeploy. So you want to examine these problem sets quite carefully. You want to look at the relationship, like the hardware that you deploy in a storage environment absolutely is going to have an effect on the kinds of capabilities you can have at the layers upstream. Like when you begin to abstract away from the hardware layer, there absolutely are still going to be the dependencies on the kinds of data services that you have lying beneath. NetApp really reduces the time to deployment, the ease of management, lifecycle management. I think that uh, lifecycle management is often overlooked. What are you gonna do when you get to the sort of uh, end of scale, end of life uh, point in most of your storage environments? You're not going to have the luxury of being able to do uh, outages or do forklift upgrades. You absolutely need to have a way to do uh, you know, zero performance, zero impact to running environment uh, uplift when you begin to replace your environment. And for storage, that's absolutely important. And uh, for a lot of teams who are just starting out and they've had their proof of concept environment, they've never uh, gotten to the point where they've reached the end of their scale or reached the end of, their, of, of life for their underpinning architecture and hardware because they haven't had it that long. And so if you don't have the built-in roadmap and timeline for managing the underlying uh, uplift that you have for your storage, it's going to be a problem. NetApp solutions are software defined, absolutely. Uh, the NFE environments, the next generation data center environments you see are gonna be a mix of physical and virtualized and containerized and cloud environments. And you have to have a way to be able to provide that consistent uh, integration and a consistent kind of consumption across all of those environments. Uh, whether uh, the team is uh, deploying against the cloud, or whether they're deploying against a hybrid environment, or whether they're deploying against physical infrastructure that is on premise, it absolutely must have the same fit and feel. It's not gonna make any sense whatsoever to have distinct and differentiated kinds of deployments to support storage. And I've talked enough about scalability. Absolutely, scale is going to encroach upon nearly every single environment that we see today. The growth for capacity-related requirements um, is, is quite well understood, but it's going to be uh, beyond what we can uh, handle. And here I'll go through a few use cases. Um, here we're talking about the deployments across all POPs in uh, National Telco. 
Um, and this is exactly where we're going to have the sort of small uh, 5 to 20 NEBS based compliant nodes on site. This is solid fire based. Uh, here we're talking about the solid fire 9605, uh, which in the uh, sort of world of solid fire, that's the medium, if you're talking about the small, medium, and large size nodes. Um, and this allows exactly for the kind of scaling requirements that they have, where you can scale from 5 to 20 nodes uh, per site uh, quite trivially. You know, when they're starting to start small, they don't quite have uh, a large ca capacity requirements in providing the sort of cloud edge uh, pop deployment. Uh, the next use, you know, use case that we talk about here is something that does require uh, a scaling and growth of capacity requirements. And this is using the uh, hybrid uh, FAS. Uh, so they are starting uh, quite small, uh, maybe with the number of nodes not quite as broad, only, only three pops. Uh, but they've, uh, within the past two years, have grown 13 times um, and expect to go within the next year to 24x. So you, know, you talk about um, growth and scaling requirements uh, to go 24x in three years. How can you anticipate that? How can you begin to roadmap and plan if you are not using a environment or a storage support system that allows for that kind of scale? And again, you could probably draw a Venn diagram that describes what uh, you can achieve with the automation capabilities of a solid fire, the automation capabilities within ONTAP, um, and then even the kinds of uh, brute force kinds of automation that you can do with an E-Series. I mean, you think about E-Series as being the kind of dumb but fast uh, hardware environment, you can absolutely begin to put uh, those kinds of scripted and PowerShell kinds of tools to get similar kinds of uh, deployment. But it's absolutely not going to be as rich uh, and available as what you can get with SolidFire. Automation resources, absolutely. Um, I find um, you know, many customers who ingest some NetApp are not quite taking advantage of the automation that's available to uh, NetApp hardware and NetApp software. Um, if you are still configuring any of your environment, and not just storage, but also compute, if you're still doing manual configuration and sort of this custom, you know, high touch uh, work to make an environment go, you're doing it wrong. You absolutely need to find the resources and find ways to automate and provide the kind of configuration that requires less touch. You know, this idea of having a high touch, low value um, activities is not going to be sustainable. You want low touch, high value. So if you're uh, using any of uh, Ansible or Puppet, if you're using Ansible to do deployments, that's absolutely uh, what you should be doing. I mean, a, a number of customers are simply asking for a MAC address. You know, rather than uh, doing a hand touch uh, integration, they simply just need the MAC address of, the, uh, of a node, and then they can run through the DRAC a script to deploy that. And that's absolutely the kind of direction that people want to go in. And I think that's the end of the slides that I have for you. Um, you can find me at the uh, booth D3. It's uh, within the marketplace over there. And of course, there'll be other uh, NetApp folk to help you out or answer any questions. But I think that's it. Any questions that people want to bring or ask? Absolutely. So the question is around uh, why the focus on NFE, uh, because I see this in data centers as a whole. That's absolutely correct. The collapsing of the way uh, telcos and the hyperscale uh, large enterprise are approaching solving NFE have absolutely begun to encroach down into standard data center use across enterprise. So you're absolutely correct. That collapsing is happening. Um, we'll, I, I see you know, even within NetApp, people are beginning to describe NFE as next generation data center. NFE is simply just another type of or specific type of next generation data center that fits in with the kind of a larger umbrella of that next generation uh, data center. Because all of these requirements, when we talk about being able to scale, having deterministic uh, kinds of predictive performance, 
um, built-in efficiencies, the ability to have HA with an automated kind of recovery to uh, working state, those absolutely exist at the sort of non-NFV. But you'll find, uh, you know, when I, when I do look at the sort of next generation data center deployments to support things like, you know, parking applications or IoT, it looks very much like uh, the FC diagram for NFV. Very much so. Anybody else? It's just us. All right, well, thank you very much for your time. And I will see you at the uh, NetApp booth.